Our special segment tonight is a fresh look at the series of murders in Atlanta, a report prepared by James Polk, a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter. In it, Polk describes how little is known about one of the longest series of unsolved murders in the country's history. Aaron Jackson Jr. was among the youngest, only nine years old. Luby Jeter was 14, Timothy Hill, 13. Patrick Baltazar, 11. For almost two years, the bodies have kept coming out of Atlanta's rivers and woods, and week after week, police speak of sorrow and sympathy, but not a solution. It's just a, a tragic, horrible nightmare that we're going through. We're not in a position today to make an arrest. There are cases in history that have gone on much longer than this has. At police task force headquarters, there are 27 faces on the wall, 26 murdered, one missing. The killer? There is a handful of sketches, no one the same, no one certain to be the person police want. Almost a year after the task force was set up, police can't answer who or why. They don't know how or where or even how many of the black victims may have been killed by the same person. One investigator says even if the killer walked in the door and confessed, there is not enough evidence now to convict him. A half dozen of the cases may be isolated, unrelated homicides. The victims found near home, killed perhaps by family or friends. But somewhere in the city of Atlanta, there is a person who has killed 15 or 20 boys and young men. The district attorney keeps a chart on the wall with names of the dead and room for more. With my theory, the uh, person is not abducted, not kidnapped, not snatched off the street at that particular time, but is willingly going with somebody for something, at least at the instance they get in the car. They're going to make some money, or they're going to meet somebody. They're going starting off willingly. Like many victims, Jojo Bell, 15, was a child of the streets, always in need of money. He worked for his supper once in a while at the seafood carryout and always asked the owner to give him a ride home. He wouldn't walk speed at night because the cause of the killer. You know, he used, to, he used to joke about it. You know, he's I ain't let the killer, the kid snatch to snatch me. But someone did. Yeah, somebody did. Bell had been a basketball buddy of Timothy Hill. Hill spent his last known night at the seedy shack on Gray Street, the home of a 63-year-old homosexual called Uncle Tom. None of the victims has been found sexually abused, but the obvious question intrigues investigators. Mickey McIntosh, one of the adults killed, hung around the same carryout where Jojo Bell worked. You know, I have seen gays come down and seen Mickey in the car with, you know, gays. Uh, they, would, they would be dressed all up and stuff. They'll come by here and sometimes look for Mickey. Atlanta's safety commissioner will say only what he doesn't know. Where we are in the investigation right now is we do not know the person or persons that are responsible, therefore we do not have the motive. The killer seems to taunt police and read press clippings. After a well-publicized but futile search along a road in an outlying county, the next child strangled with a rope was dumped there. And when a suburban police official criticized Atlanta's investigation, a child choked to death was left just inside that official's county line. After a press report that police had found fibers on some of the bodies, six of the last seven victims have been dropped into rivers, all stripped to their undershorts or less, possibly to wash away evidence. NBC News has learned in some cases the synthetic fibers were found on victims' clothing hanging in closets at home, indicating those children may have visited their killer at times before their death. But authorities have had this secret evidence for weeks, and it still has not led to the killer. Police are undermanned, right. and there is grumbling in the ranks. One patrolman is quoted, they don't tell us anything. It seems like they don't trust us. The murder investigation is being run by a 103-person task force. One official concedes it's not even certain what to tell the cop on the beat to look for. The investigation seems beset by friction and frustration. We're going to solve the cases. That's our resolve. The only unanswered question right now is when. Meanwhile, at the cemetery, the dead, Bell, Hill, McIntosh, are being buried faster than the cemetery can supply grave markers with their names. Sadly, some officials concede Atlanta is unlikely to catch the killer unless he keeps on killing. I will say that there's a better chance to catch him if he doesn't stop. James Polk, NBC News, Atlanta.